With the SDK200, Raspberry Pi Pico has a new VS Code extension, which is the most straightforward approach to getting going with the toolchain and building C++ and C applications, or indeed Python applications. I've been working with the Pico SDK since the first release, but I'm not historically a fan of VS Code or working exclusively within an IDE. I'm quite impressed though, there are some things I'm going to need to change in my existing projects to work with this extension. Let me tell you all about it. Hi, I'm John, your concierge to the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, Pico 2, Robotics, IoT, and other fun tech. Remember to subscribe and join the community. On some platforms, the setup of the Pico SDK and toolchain has been quite simple. For example, the Raspberry Pi OS, where it was a single install script or Windows, thanks to Nicole Debassi's installer. On other platforms like Linux and particularly MacOS, it has been a bit of a slog. So I should be really delighted to have a new simple approach to installing. In a lot of ways, I'm impressed. This is quick and easy to install. Get up and running very easily, though it's a little misleading as to use a realistic project structure, you're going to need to use the CMake VS Tool extension more extensively. The big limitation is that you will work inside the IDE only. That may not be a big deal for you, but it is for me. If you like this video and it helps your learning or projects, why not drop me a cash tip using the super thanks button below the video. I'm saving these up to get myself to open source in San Francisco next year, and I'd appreciate your help in getting me there, and I hope to see you there too. Please hit the like button on the video and subscribe for more. So things have evolved a lot along the journey with the Pico since its first release. And you know, our SDK has gone through many releases up to the current release of 2.0.0. And through those releases, we've changed and evolved and increased the amount of ways that we can actually build for the Pico. Now, I'm of course used to using some of these tools natively in the tool chain of using, you know, the CMake and then Ninja or Make to build the code, uh, GMDB as my debugger and OpenOCD to actually then flash and as a debug link over onto the chip itself. Of course, an IDE as well is also useful, but not essential. And so when I build, I go through a simple scripts approach of I make the build directory, I change into that build directory, I issue cmake dot dot to actually build all the make files and then make to actually do the build. Now, of course, when we go to VS Code, we're basically in this cycle within VS Code where all of that stuff should be being done for us in that environment. Well, that's the theory anyway. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is one of the most experienced PCB manufacturers in the world. They pride themselves to be your best business partner, as well as a good friend in every aspect of your PCB needs. As well as being a PCB fabricator and PCB manufacturer, they also do 3D printing, CNC, and sheet metal work. Have you seen their new design competition? Including a wide range of themes and real cash prizes. Go check it out today. So VS Code is very easy to install. It's available for Mac, Windows, Linux, Raspberry Pis, you know, everything really. And we can just go to um, code.visualstudio.com, find our version and download it and install it just like any other application. So that bit's easy. There are actually some other prerequisites before we put on the extensions to be able to compile and build for our Pico. So on Mac, we need to install um, Xcode. And that's quite common for development environments. And you probably, have, if you're a developer, have already done this. The only thing I would say about Xcode on the Mac is it is a little bit of a pain because it requires to be updated and uh, agreement re-signed generally on every version of upgrade that we do on the Mac OS, which sometimes I forget and sometimes then cause me problems in builds. So uh, yes, but otherwise installing Xcode is pretty easy. Do that, just type that command in a terminal. If you're on Windows, well, there are no prerequisites. You can just go straight ahead. 
Well, one caveat though. Um, the VS Code extension only works on x86 based uh, Windows. So if you're on one of the um, ARM based, RISC based versions of Windows, um, you know, like you're trying to run it on a Raspberry Pi uh, 5 or something, then this isn't going to work. Um, on Linux, um, and this would apply both on a Raspberry Pi as well as a um, Intel uh, server or, or Intel based uh, laptop or desktop, you need a few uh, prerequisites. You need Python 3.9 or later, uh, Git, uh, GDB, MultiArc, which is what's actually going to give you the debugging. Um, then a couple of libs there, which are to do with actually connecting to the um, Pico itself and providing the libraries to do that. So you can install them using things like apt-get or whatever your package manager you're using. Those aren't actually that complicated a set of stepping stones, which gets us to a point where we're actually ready to install the extension and actually use it to start road coding for our Pico or Pico2. So inside a VS Code, I'm going to use the package manager to install the extensions. And I do that by using Control Shift X or Command Shift X on a Mac in order to load up the package manager and then select the Pico or search for the Raspberry Pi Pico extension. And we can just install that. Now, this will take a little while to just get that up and running. And it hasn't really done all of the install. Um, it's just done some of it and we'll find out that in a second. So I'm first going to use this to write a little application to flash the onboard LED on the Pico and I'll show you how easy that is and then we're going to flash that onto the Pico using boot cell. So we're going to go via the USB route which means my Pico's or Pico 2, actually it's Pico in this case, is going to be attached to my Mac um, via USB. So I select the Pico icon on the left hand side and then I'm going to do new project from example. And this way I can actually go and select one of the Raspberry Pi's own examples to actually base my code on. So let's see it pick the simple blink example and we will build it for a Pico. I need to tell it where I want it to generate that and the folder above where it's going to create it. So I'm going to create source folder. I'm just going to place it in there. And then we're going to be version 2.0.0 and I'll set up the and accept the standards. And I said originally it hadn't installed that um, uh, Pico extension properly. Uh, this is why, because now we're going to wait a little bit while it downloads all of the Python and uh, other controls and, and utilities it needs in order to actually complete the build. Let me fast forward a bit through this. So we've actually got a little bit more than just the Pico extension on here. It's actually installed the CMake extension, which is good because we use that in a little while. But it's just going to ask me to do a little bit of configuration here on CMake and uh, tell it what we're using as our build engine. And of course, that's going to be the Pico ecosystem. So I'm going to go into the configuration. I'm just going to select that that's Pico. Brilliant. Let's have a look at the code of what we actually got here. And you see here is actually a, a standard Blink application nicked over from Raspberry Pi. And we can now actually go straight into building it. Now, provided my Pico is in boot cell mode, i.e. I've pushed that button uh, while powering it, then I can actually go and uh, push the code straight to it using the run button here. And we then have our Pico blinking and we can see that running here. Now, I find boot cell really uh, frustrating and annoying to keep on having and going and touching my Pico every time I want to load code on it. So I normally use a debug probe or a second Pico running uh, the Pico probe software and connect it into the SWD or debug port at the back of the Pico. 
And that's what I'm going to do now and show that actually using the VS Code extension, I can still push code across, but this time via this uh, SWD uh, flashing approach. Now, first off, um, we want to be able to see that I've actually done this. So I'm going to change the code a bit and I'm going to add the delay why it's uh, off to be twice as long as the delay while it's on. So we see a slightly different flashing pattern. Then I'm going to compile the code. Now this time, if I go to the Pico app itself, or extension itself, and that will load up a menu here and I can go and say flash the program via SWD. And that will go and find my Pico probe and push the code over it. And then we can see a slightly different flashing pattern running on my Pico. Now I have some other in-depth videos on the Raspberry Pi debug probe. Uh, go and have a look at those if you want to know a little bit more. Now there are a couple of limitations with this VS Code extension from uh, for the Pico. This won't work with any project that has subfolders or includes uh, libraries with an, uh, in its own lib directory or port code or just about any of the real stuff that I have in all of my uh, projects. In fact, every project, even my simplest project, I normally have a source folder, which would immediately cause problems for this um, extension. So how are we going to get over that? Well, first of all, there's an example project up here, which is the one I'm going to use, and I'll share that on GitHub just in case you think I'm pulling a fast one. But really, actually, there are a couple of things we need to do. We need to use the CMake uh, extension to VS Code instead of the Pico for actually doing the building. And then we can still use the Pico extension for doing flashing and running the debugger. But we just need to use something else for doing build. And we have one other little uh, trick that we have to do to uh, change the place that binaries are being located because normally my binaries are under build source and then I've got binaries in there. I need to take them up and put them at the top level of the build. And I can do that by making uh, a little change to the CMake list file. So this time I'm going to import a project using the Pico tool and using the import project option. So this will take that project and adapt it to, um, to be able to work with the Pico extension. So I just find my project here. There we go. And we'll leave the other settings as this. And then we've got all of our projects set up here and available to us. Now I'm going to have a look. You see this CMake file has actually been, our CMake list file has been actually edited slightly. Now the key thing for working with uh, the, the Pico tool is where I'm using variables to normally name my project, I can't do that in that project line. I have to use a proper code and not a variable there, otherwise things just won't work. The other thing we need to do is we need to set the target for our build of the final component and the elf to be at the top level directory. And that's what I'm doing there with the set target. Uh, apart from that, it should all be good. Right, so I now need to say that we're going to use CMake and not the Raspberry Pi for doing compilation. And I do that by just changing those two variables around now in the settings.json file. Um, that should be enough now so that we can actually use CMake to compile things. I need to check the configuration and it's set to be using Pico there. That's important. We're going to use uh, debug, but there are the other levels of build we could do. Uh, build set to all. The rest of it should be fine. And then we can do the run tasks option. And that will give me what are the normal run tasks to do. And I'm going to basically select from CMake and select the build option. And that will run CMake dot dot and the make after it, basically. Now, 
Now one of the nice things about doing this via the SIGMATE tool is that instead of just being able to compile we actually can see the other options that are available inside Make. So you can do things like Make Clean, um, uh, Make Install, Make Tests, etc. The other things you might actually want to run for a more complex build. I'm now able to use Pico Tool and use the uh, Flash Pico uh, Flash the projects via SWD to actually flash that over and then we can see this application running. This version basically blinks in a count pattern, so it counts and it blinks once, then twice, then three times, up to five. If we're to stay entirely within the tool, then of course I will want to be able to see telemetry coming over serial uh, up into my uh, application and seeing that. And we do, we have a serial monitor where we can do that. And of course, debug as well. So first of all, let's have a quick look at the debugger. So under my Pico tool, there is a debug option and I can just put debug project and it will and say what debugger we want to do. We're on the Cortex debugger and that will go off, load up the code onto the Pico and then plump us into the application. And then I can start stepping my way through the application as I'd normally do in the debugger, look at variables and do all of the other stuff that you'd expect me to be able to do. So we also have down here a serial monitor and I can select what uh, port I want to go on. And I've got two Picos here, you see. I've actually got the debugger and the Pico itself and both of them are showing up because I'm actually pushing out standard um, I.O. over both of them. And I can see what's coming out of my Blink application. Um, I'm actually going to stop it and switch it to the other Pico. Um, so this one is actually the debug probe. And as you see, I can see the same data coming out of both. To get started, I think the VS Code extensions for the Pico and the CMake extensions are great accelerators. I like how it makes all of the platforms install and configuration now feel the same. This does feel like a step forward. Am I going to be using it on all of my projects though? Um, no. The main reason for that is multiple windows. Um, it's true, I might start using VS Code for editing and for running the debugger as that seems to work really quite nicely. But fundamentally, I enjoy working across multiple screens and windows as I work. I want to be able to see a full transcript of the compilation or the telemetry from my application at the same time as looking at multiple points in the code. And personally, I feel a bit too trapped within the IDE to be able to do that. Does this make me a dinosaur? Possibly. But command lines and Unix shells are, I'm afraid, second nature to me. And I can't see myself giving that up anytime soon. So, Though I agree this is a nice approach, I'll still want to have the full toolchain installed in my environment. If you like this video and it helps your learning or projects, why not drop me a cash tip using that super thanks button below the video. Remember, I'm saving these up to get myself to open source in San Francisco next year, and I'd appreciate your help in getting me there, and I hope to see you there too. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, and I hope you did, please do hit that like button. And please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next video. Bye bye for now.